You make a lot of 3D animations in Blender, right? But the render times, they could always be faster. To make amazing animations, you need to experiment a lot and make a lot of different versions. And with slow render times, you have no chance in achieving that. And I know what you're probably thinking right now. Maybe I could just sell my grandma's car and buy the RTX 4090. But that's not the option for everyone, so let's see how to optimize your scene. Rendering consists of these three main processes. First, it has to take all of your textures and meshes and load them into the GPU. Then it has to render the scene, which usually takes the longest time. And at the end, there is the denoiser and compositing, which also takes some time. Loading time of your scene is very important and overlooked at the same time. I didn't hear anyone to talk about it. Sure, there is this persistent data option that loads the scene on the first frame and all the remaining frames should be without loading times. But if you have a very complex animated scene, you might have the long loading times anyway, and it might be even 30 seconds, which is pretty annoying. In the process, you need to make a lot of preview renders, and I like to have them between 5 to 15 seconds per frame. To get rid of these long loading times, I recommend checking the modifiers on your object, because you might have some high subdivision or bevel, and that might slow it down. If I have a ground or some object with displacement in my scene, I usually back it up into the hidden collection, and then I just apply all modifiers and decimate it so the model is really low poly. And you should also have some order in your scene so you can turn off some collection and try rendering without them, because this way you can find the culprit of your scene. You can also try the simplify option to turn off all subdivisions and see if the scene is loading faster. Now let's take a look how to optimize the rendering process. I will first run through these settings in case you don't know them and then I will show you some tricks I use. Hopefully you have the NVIDIA GPU to use the optics, which is the fastest. Most of the work for you will do this noise threshold option. You will set the amount of noise that's acceptable for you, lower means better, and then you will set the sample count. Cycles will then use different amount of samples to different parts of the scene, depending on how complex it is. I recommend using high samples and finding a good threshold value because your scene might be mostly simple, but one part of the scene, for example, will be more difficult and Blender will there automatically use more samples, so you will not have the noise there. You should also try setting the lowest light bounce as possible until it starts to change the look of your scene. Because the lower bounces you have, the faster it will render. I like to check my scene without the viewport denoising, so I can see if there is some unreasonable noise. I play with the indirect and direct clumping and check if it removes some noise. You just have to be careful, because it can wash out your highlights, and they will not be bright as they used to be. You might also get some noise on the reflective surfaces, and for that there is this option to filter glossy. I usually set it to 10 and it helps. I avoid using volumetrics, because it basically kills your render time. So I just use this emission value to get the volumetric fog. Sometimes I use z-depth pass to add the volume in compositing, but I usually like to get as final renders as possible, so I don't have to do much compositing. And if I need to get the volumetric lighting and not only the fog, I use EV for that and render a separate layer for compositing, as you can see here. Another simple trick is just using a texture for that like this. In general, you should keep your scenes very simple, and if the object is far from camera or if there is significant motion blur, you should just keep it very low poly and use lower textures for that. Decimation is your friend here. If it's possible, you should also use plates for the background because it can save you a lot of time and performance. And depending on projects, you should consider rendering on separate layers, because you might have a background that will not change much, but the foreground will need a lot of versions to get it perfect, so you can just render it quickly on a separate layer. Using a render region can also save you a lot of time, because you can render only the part that's needed for the update and then you can combine it in post. And if you don't have a flamenco so far, you should start using it, because even if you have just one computer in your network, it can save you a lot of time. It's an official add-on from Blender, it's really easy to install and it's completely free. You can just prepare a bunch of scenes for a render and when you have a break, you can just launch the worker and it will start rendering your frames. You can render a lot of animations from different scenes overnight and you can be sure that in the morning you will find all of the frames. It would also be crazy not to mention this new add-on that helps you to optimize your scene. It literally looks at your scene and decides what texture resolution is needed for each object and then it adaptively downscales them. So just you don't have some small rock in your scene that has a lot of 4K textures absolutely uselessly. 
there is also a feature that analyzes your whole scene and tells you which object and texture is taking most of your VRAM. I actually worked for guys at Polygonic for about two years and I know that they are preparing some new crazy features for the next release. So I recommend buying it now while it's still cheap, link is in the description. While working for them, I helped to develop most of these add-ons. I made for example a lot of vehicles for traffic. I use these add-ons all the time and I don't even know how to handle my renders anymore without render set. So check the description, links are there. Yeah, and finally the compositing and denoising. This is especially important if you are making a preview renders, because you are trying to get like 5 seconds per frame and then every second counts. If you use the optics denoiser, it's gonna be much faster, so it's very good for previews. And for the final renders, I use the open image because the result is a bit better. And you need to keep in mind that if you use glare or some complicated compositing setups, it can also take few seconds. So for preview renders, I recommend turning off compositing and sequencer. I hope you learned at least one new trick today and if you have some other tricks you use, please share it with me and others in the comments. As a freelance 3D artist, I make a lot of different animations and visual effects, so if you are looking for somebody for your project, check my website to see more works. You can also follow me on Instagram to stay in touch, I post there more content and some updates from my life. Thank you for watching the video and see you next time.